Hello everyone and welcome back to Jira 8 Recipes. In section 2, we talked about the plugin development process where we discussed the fundamentals of Jira plugin development process in detail, which covered the setting up of development environment, creating a plugin, deploying and customizing it. Now, in section 3, advanced Jira configuration and customization, we are going to talk about the various techniques to configure Jira for the organization's needs and branding. So let's go ahead and get started. In this section, we will be talking about adding new issue types and configuring them to your project. We will also look at creating and adding custom fields to desired issue types. Then we'll explore enabling time tracking fields to track efforts that the project team puts towards an issue, which helps in estimating the efforts. Then we are going to talk about user management for new administrators and learn to manage different user roles and permissions as per your project needs. After this, we will look at configuring the look and feel of Jira as well as modifying alerts and notification for an issue. At the end, we will explore the Jira database with an example. Let's begin with very first video of this section, configuring issue types, custom fields, time tracking. Jira is an issue-based application and there are different types of issues that we have seen in the last section. However, depending upon the project needs, sometimes we may want to add a custom issue type and that's what we are going to learn in the first part of this video. So let's see how to add a new issue type to your project. Now before we begin, we need to log into Jira using Jira Administrator User Role. Now let's say we have this project, mobile app project, for which we want to create a custom issue type. But before we create any custom issue type, let's see what are the available issue types for this particular project. And for that, click on create button here. And it will take us to create issue screen where if you click on issue type drop down, you will see we have story, task, bug and epic. And these are the default issue types which are tied to this particular project. Now let's say we want to create a custom issue type to handle our production incident tickets and for that we can click on administration and issues option here and it will take us to issue type screen where we can see all the issue types and their associated schemes. We'll talk about it later on but first try to create our custom issue type by clicking on add issue type button here and on the screen we can provide the name which is let's say prod incident and you can provide more details in the description and click on add button and if you notice it got created however it got associated with a default scheme which is default issue type scheme if you click on this edit button here it will take us to edit issue screen where we can change the name or we can add description or even we can add an image to distinguish this particular issue type from others and just update it and it got updated successfully. Now it's time to associate our newly added custom issue type with issue type scheme. But before we do that, we need to know what issue type scheme our project is using. And for that, we can go to issue type scheme here. And if you notice for our mobile app project, we have scrum issue type scheme and we have all these issue types available and they are associated for our project. So if you click on edit button here, it will take us to modify issue type screen where you can see on your left hand side we have all the issues which are added for the current scheme and all the available issue types and in this section we see we do have our newly added custom issue type which is prod incident so let's drag and drop and add it to the custom scheme and save it and that's it we have associated our newly added custom issue type to a custom issue scheme so if you go back and click on create button here and select the project and click on the drop down, we do have our newly created custom issue type, which is prod incident. And that's how you can create a custom issue type and associate to existing issue type scheme. Now there is an option to create a brand new issue type scheme and apply it to your project. Let's try that. And for that, let's go back to admin section and issues option here. And let's go to issue type scheme where we can see all the available issue type schemes. Now let's say we want to create our custom issue type scheme and for that click on add issue type scheme. And here we can provide the details such as the name, 
of the scheme which is fraud incident scheme then you can provide description you can select the default issue type and on your left hand side panel we can see all the issue types which are added to this particular scheme and on the right hand side panel you can see all the available issue types so let's say for this particular issue type scheme i want to add fraud incident story and task as issue types so if we add them and click on save button here we have created successfully our custom issue type scheme however it's not associated with any other project such as here for scrum issue type scheme we do have a project which is mobile app project but our newly created issue type scheme we do not have any project so let's go ahead and associate project to our newly created issue type scheme and for that click on associate link here and here it gives us an option to select a project so let's click on mobile app project and click on associate and that's it we have associated our project to this particular scheme so to test this let's click on create button here and if we click on issue type drop down you can see we have story fraud incident and task and these are the newly added issue types from our newly added custom issue type scheme now that we have added a new issue type if you notice all these issue types consist of different fields which helps us to describe that issue type in detail let's add and configure a custom field to newly added issue type for that let's log into jira with admin role and let's see what are the field options we have for our newly added issue type which is fraud incident and for that click on create button and it will take us to the create issue screen where if you notice we have fields such as summary reporter description priority label and assignee epic link and so on however we do not have a field called severity and let's say we want to add that field for this issue type which is fraud incident so let's add that and for that go to admin section and click on issues option here and it will take us to issue type screen so let's scroll down and go to custom field screen where we can see all the fields and their associated screens let's say if i click on epic name four screens link here i can see that epic name custom field is associated and is visible on all these four screens so creating a custom field is very simple you can just click on add custom field button and it will take us to the screen where we have different choices to select the custom field that we want to create we have date picker label number field we have radio button and select list and so on let's say we want to create a drop down list and for that we can click select list option and click on next and here we can provide the name which is let's say severity and we can provide description if we want and here we can provide the different options that user can select from that particular drop down so let's say we want to add values as low high medium and default all right it looks good so click on create button now it gives us an option to either associate these fields at this moment with the screens or we can simply click on cancel button and associate it later on so let's click on cancel and let's go back to our custom field screen where we can see our newly added custom field severity and it hasn't linked with any screens yet now if you decide to change the details you can always do that by clicking on the settings icon here and going to the edit option and it gives you an option to modify the details such as you can add description created for fraud incident and click on update all right it got updated now it's time to decide for which particular project or even for which issue type we want to enable this field and for that we can click on settings icon here and go to configure screen where we can see we have an option to change the default value to let's say default and we can add more options by clicking on edit options link here or we can modify the project details and the issue type and for that we can click on edit configuration link and it will take us to modify configuration screen 
where we can see the default scheme is default configuration scheme for severity and the available issue types are epic prod incident story task so we can pick prod incident for which we want to enable this field and we have an option to either enable this field globally or specific to the project and for that let's say we select a project which is mobile app project and click on modify all right now this particular issue type is applicable or visible to mobile app project only where the issue type is prod incident. Now let's go back to our custom field screen where we can see the information for severity field has been updated and as you can see we have now one project associated with it. So if we click on it we can see the mobile app project has been linked. However we haven't associated any screens yet and for that we can go to field configuration screen and click on default field configuration where we can see the list of all custom fields and default fields. So let's scroll down to our custom field which is severity and if you notice we do not have any screens linked yet. So for that click on screens link here and it will take us to the default screens or all available screens that your project is using. In our case we have scrum default issue screen. So let's select that and update it. All right, we have successfully associated our custom field with the screen where we want it to be displayed. In this example, we try to use the existing screen, which is Scrum default screen. If we click on it, you can see we have all these fields listed and are available for that particular screen. However, we do have an option to create our custom screen. Let's say if we go to the screens tab, we can see these are all available screens and we do have an option to create a screen. So let's say we want to add a test screen and click on add. And here we can add all the fields that we want this particular screen to be using. And for that, we can say we want to add environment. We want to add due date, label, issue type summary, severity, and so on. And once we add it, we just have to go back to our field configuration tab and associate with our newly added custom field. And if you notice, Jira has already linked the newly added screen to our custom field, which is severity. All right, now it's time to test whether our prod incident issue type has field severity with value as default and as you can see we have severity field and its default value is default and if I click on the drop down here we do have an option to change the value from low to high to medium and then again to default and that's how you can create custom fields and associate it with the custom issue types and add it to the link so that we can see the custom fields on our selected issue type. All right. Now it's time to track our efforts that we spent on an issue and we can do that by using the time tracking option. Time tracking option in Jira is enabled by default. Let's verify that quickly by going to administration and issues option here and if we scroll down to issue features here we can see the time tracking option so let's click on it and it will take us to time tracking setting screen where we can see the current settings which are like number of hours per day is like 8 and working days per week is 5. We have the current default unit format in minutes and the format is like days, hours and minutes. So if we click on deactivate button, it gives us an option to change these settings. Let's say we want to work for 4 hours per day and let's keep days as is. Let's change the time format as days and click on activate and that's it. We have changed the settings now. After we change the settings, it's time to make adjustment to the work on issue permission scheme. These permission schemes help us define which user role or group can log hours. And for that, let's click on permission scheme option here. And it will take us to permission scheme screen where let's say for our project, mobile app project, we want to change the permissions. So click on permissions option and it will take us to default software scheme where if we scroll down to crime tracking permissions and we have work on issues 
option here. So let's click on edit and modify this permission and it will take us to the screen where we can grant access based on the project role or even group. So let's say I want to give permission to a group of testers so that they can log their hours and click on grant and it gets added successfully. Now if I log in as a tester, I can see an option to log my hours. So let's try that. Before we log in with the tester user role, let's verify how many users we have under the tester group. And for that, we can go to user management and groups option. And on the screen, if I click on edit members, I can see all the users which are added under this particular user group. So let's say I have tester one. So let's log out and log in as tester user. And after we log in, let's go to mobile app project. And here, let's create a new issue. Let's say we want to create a story and click on create. So before we log our hours that we spent on this particular issue, we need to record the original estimation. And for that, click on edit option here. And it will take us to edit issue screen where we can specify the original estimation for this issue under the original estimate field. Let's say we have estimation for four days and update. All right. So it has enabled time tracking option for this particular issue. As you can see on the right hand side, we have time tracking option, which says the estimated remaining and logged hours. So let's say we want to record our hours for this issue. So click on more and go to log work. And here we can specify the hours that we spent. So let's say 10 hours and we started working on, let's say from the 1st of November and we don't want to adjust. Then we can select the option as set to or reduce by or by default, we can say adjust automatically. That's it and click on log. And if you notice, it has changed automatically from four days to the remaining hours is three days, seven hours and 50 minutes. And the logged hours are 10 minutes because the time format that we chose was in the minute. And that's how you can log your hours for any particular issue.